Is there not an entire section on this subject? Yes, Vanessa, it's unfair. I may have, I may have saved my mind about beef, for example. Is, is, your, is your book for sale about it? Yes, it is. Let me tell you, have you let ever me asked you, let God for forgiveness? I'm not sure. I just go and try and do a better job. Let me tell you, 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 let me tell you. Say it like you mean it. This is my vibe. Yo, Trey. What up? I got something to say. Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to Let Me Tell You, episode 103. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. I almost didn't make it there for a minute. Um, so, a couple of things. We're going to uh, just jump right into the episode this week. A couple of things that we need to talk about. Joe Biden had his first, apparently, public press conference. I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know if he took questions. I didn't even watch the thing. Um Just because my candy even is broke and, you know, I can't get it into the shop for another probably four years. So um, (laughs) I just uh, I but I saw some clips and I heard the general, you know, bullet points. Thankfully, you know, there are guys like Steve Dace and uh, I don't think he watched it either. Aaron, uh, producer for Steve Dace and Ben Shapiro and guys like that and everybody on Twitter and YouTube and, and so on. They watched it for us. And of course, the uh, the important stuff got posted. So I saw the clips of, you know, the really important things I know that I have to uh, submit to my my rulers. And uh, we will not have any public uh, gatherings or barbecues with my family until July 4th. And that is only if we're good. If we please the the overseers of the pandemic, what, you know, whatever. So Joe says we can, uh, you know, we can get together, still wear masks and all that stuff. But July 4th, if you're good, you can get together with your family. You can have barbecues. You can have all that stuff and blah, 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 blah. Here's the deal. The reality of it is just stop. Just really just stop. I haven't worn a mask anywhere except for work in months. Um, I've already had COVID, so I don't need to worry about it. But again, I, I just, it's the ridiculous. I mean, Texas has opened up. Thank you, Texas. Although Governor Abbott, you got other issues that we're going to talk about later a little bit, but, um, so Mississippi's opened up. I mean, so many places have been open. Uh, now that Gavin Newsom is going to be recalled, there's going to be a recall election in California. They've gotten over 2 million signatures on the recall petition. Now he's coming out and going, I'm really sorry. I may have made some mistakes and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, too late. I, I, I'm so, I'm just done with with the ridiculous politicians and all this stuff and Fauci and vaccinations and you know you can get the vaccine but you still got to wear masks because maybe the vaccine can will protect you from the virus and maybe the mask will protect you from the virus and maybe um, having the virus will protect you from the virus and maybe not and all this stuff apparently the only way you can be sure that you're not going to get COVID-19 is if you're dead that's it the only thing that can ever will ever protect you from COVID-19 is dying from COVID-19. That's really it. That's the only way you're ever going to be able to fully be safe and not have to wear masks and not have to hug your kids or see your grandparents or whatever. Why is it? I mean, I, this horse is dead. I continue to beat it, but this, I mean, this is what keeps coming up. Why do we not treat this virus the way we have treated every other virus in the history of viruses that we have dealt with? You know, we've never gone a year in masks. We've never done this level, especially not with something that has a 99.9% survivability rate. Is it a tragedy that anybody died at all from COVID-19? Yes, it's a tragedy when anybody dies, especially if somebody dies not knowing Christ is their Savior. That's the real tragedy. Those of us who are saved and who know Jesus, death isn't a tragedy. 
absent from the body is present with the Lord. The Lord is, is pleased in the death of his saints. We have so many Bible verses and stuff like that that we can look at that says, I am not in fear of death. If something comes along, whether it be COVID-19, COVID-21, COVID-37, or sweet meteor of death or the bus down the street that wasn't paying attention to texting while he was driving any of those things come along and takes me out it's going to be a tragedy for somebody but for me <coughs> i'm going to heaven there you go and if you repent put your trust in jesus christ you can go to heaven too you can have the assurance as well and uh that's the gospel and, and there it is but Again, we don't do this with anything else. Anything that has a higher mortality rate, you know, why are we not? I mean, abortion kills millions of children a year. Nobody's concerned about that. Because half of the people that are concerned about COVID don't think that abortion is murder. You know, again, denying science all over the place. Those are the same people that think boys who look pretty are actually girls. And they call us Christians the science deniers because we don't believe in evolution. I don't buy into global warming or any of those other things. I'm the science denier, but you think Johnny puts on a dress, suddenly he's a girl. And uh, a living being, a unique DNA inside the womb is not life. And the only way to be totally protected from COVID-19 is to die from COVID-19. Yeah. There you go. There's your science. Uh, <laughs> do, do with it what you will. But what I really want to talk about today, and uh, I've just over the last couple of weeks, I mean, really a couple of months, ever since Twitter started doing their whole banning everybody that they don't agree with uh, thing, um, and, and all these other uh, social media uh, entities started popping up, what that was all about sorry i I hit a button and and things looked weird so um yeah lost train of thought Uh, so you know social media has has the the atmosphere has really kind of changed over the last few months and and it's really been interesting i mean ever since trump was kind of the catalyst twitter got rid of trump they completely banned him on the sixth when the the can't call it an insurrection because the definition of insurrection does not fit what happened at the Capitol. A bunch of stupid people knocked down some doors and invaded, invaded, that's a good term, the the Capitol, did some really stupid stuff, a couple of people died. Again, that's sad that those things happen, but the reality of it is, is, again, they did not, that wasn't an insurrection. But and Trump did not incite it either. You know, I mean, nothing in any of his tweets, any of the speech, any of that stuff showed that Trump was inciting violence. Excuse me, sorry, I forgot to turn my phone down. Um, and now I'm getting crazy text messages. Uh, hold one for oh, stop. Of all the times to. I really don't want to start over. So, yeah, sorry, live live podcasting. Um, yeah, completely lost my train of thought there. So, um, so Trump did not incite anything. None of that had anything to do with Trump's speech or anything. That was just stupidity acted out in public. But so suddenly you started seeing all the you know people being banned, the fact checking and, and so on. The big three, the YouTube, the Facebook and the Twitter, um, all just really started. <sighs> What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say eradicating. I've heard somebody say that, but but really uh, weeding out a lot of conservatives that they didn't agree with. Um, you know, you saw some people just completely losing followers like crazy. Uh, you know, I know some people who had, you know, five, 6,000 followers who immediately in like three days lost a thousand of their followers. 
I, you know, I've never broke a thousand. I think I had at one point I had close to 800 followers. I think I lost five on Twitter again. I've, I pretty much fly under the radar. I really am amazed. I did get uh, suspended on Twitter this year, um, early, uh, just a few weeks ago, uh, for posting a graphic image of abortion. Um, and it was, you know, gratuitous violence or whatever, or gore or something to that effect. I'm like, well, it's not gratuitous. It, there's a purpose behind this. Um, but I mean, I, and I've posted hundreds of those pictures before. Now, some for some reason, I get banned because of this picture. And uh, so we start seeing this happen. We start seeing, you know, the, the Facebook fact checkers uh, just going way off the deep end and do just ridiculous stuff. Um, YouTube demonetizing people left and right and so on. I've never been monetized on YouTube uh, because I use a lot of uh, people's songs. All of the songs I use in my intros and so on are used by permission of the artist, but I just don't have anything written. So I got I have a ton of copyright claims on, on all of my podcasts, so I've never been monetized. So none of these things affected me. I just continue to plug along. I, I do want to say uh, amazing. I'm not, is it amazing? I've, I've had like a really big influx in subscribers over the last couple of weeks. We've gone, I mean, since the beginning of the year, I think I've gone from 100 to 145 in, you know, the three months that um, since the beginning of the year. So that's been really cool. That's been awesome to watch it happen here on YouTube. Again, I, I always wonder when the hammer is going to drop, when I'm going to release the, the episode that they actually look at and go, oh, no, we don't like what you're saying. We're shutting you down. Um, you know, I have moved over. I've got stuff up on Gab TV. I've put up a few videos on Rumble. So what I want to talk about, okay, again, is just the good and the bad and the ugly of, of all social media. So with these three guys, the big three kind of, I mean, obviously leaning way, 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 way left. Now we have some the these up and comers that are, are coming up uh, to replace or to to give an outlet for those who have been shoved off of the big three. So you've got MeWe, Gab, and Parlor. MeWe is kind of a, a, apparently a Facebook uh, replacement. Uh, Gab and Parlor are essentially Twitter replacements competition. Uh, I I don't know. I can't tell you a whole lot about MeWe. Um, I got on it 30 minutes in just as I'm scrolling through. So I do what I did with most of these. A lot of them I heard of from Steve Dace because that's a, one of the shows that I listen to on a regular basis. So they would talked about them. I had been on Parler. Parler gets completely shut down at one point. Amazon kicks it off their servers. Nobody will put their app in their, the parlor app in their app stores. You've got to get it from the website. You know, all this stuff. I mean, the obvious uh, attempt at uh, squashing the competition. Is it okay to squash the competition? Sure. I mean, if, if uh, here, here again, we're, we're capitalists. You know, we, we, we look at things from, okay, if, you know, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter are all private companies. I've said this all before. They get to run their companies the way they want to run their companies. They have the right to refuse service to anybody. If they don't want Donald Trump on their platform, they don't have to have Donald Trump on their platform. Does it kind of change the fact that they shouldn't be considered a platform, but they should be considered a publisher? I mean, that's another uh, constitutional argument, whatever. But again, if, if we want to uphold the rights of... I wish I could would figure out what Jack's last name is in Colorado at the Masterpiece Bake Shop, uh, Cake Shop. Um, but if we want Jack to be able to operate his business without having to make the cake for the gay wedding, then we have to allow other companies to run their businesses the way they want and have the right to refuse service to anybody that they want. 
right? And again, we know that Jack doesn't re- discriminate against gays or anything. He has served them in the past. He'll sell them a birthday cake. He'll sell them, you know, an, any other cake or cookies or whatever. He's just not going to make a cake for their wedding because we don't un- believe as Christians. And he doesn't believe that the gay wedding is actually a wedding. It violates God's law. All those reasonings behind, it violates his conscience. He should not be forced to make that cake. But again, in that vein, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook should not be forced to keep anybody on their um, on their servers that they don't want to have on their servers. They run those companies, and that's why it's great for these other companies to come up. I mean, Parler's back online. They found somebody that will host their, their site. You know, Amazon wouldn't do it, so they found someone else. Now they're running into all these problems of banks that aren't allowing them to do, uh, you know, to do business with banks. Gab is running into banks that won't take, I mean, won't take their money. The bank won't take Gab's money. That, that boggles me. I mean, it's what you, but again, if it's a privately owned bank, yeah, you know, with stockholders or whatever, they should be able to say, we don't want your money here. Uh, just the same way I should, you know, I, we as Christians, we see it all the time. And again, the whole cancel culture goes back and forth and we complain about cancel culture, cancel culture, cancel culture, but yet we're going to boycott JC Penny because they made Ellen DeGeneres their spokesperson and she's gay and we don't do that. We're going to boycott, you know, I mean, uh, the, what did I can't think of the name of the, the group, but they're, you know, the, the family, whatever, some family group has a, a whole list. It not, it's not focused on the family, but it's somebody else has a whole list of companies you should not do business with because they either support gay marriage, they uh, support abortion, abo- support Planned Parenthood, blah, blah, blah. The reality is, is if we cut ties, if as Christians, we cut ties with every one of those companies, we wouldn't do business with anybody. The, in, in, in full reality, if we're going to look at it honestly, until we all make our own banks and we make our own restaurants. And I mean, we have restaurants. We have, well, Chick-fil-A didn't, uh, you know, pan out for us the way that we expected it to. Um, apparently, they are no longer the Lord's chicken and they've caved on a bunch of things that they should not have. Um, but again, we we see these, these up-and-comers. And so, MeWe, I got on it. Within 30 minutes, I came across porn. So I was like, we're done with that. I'm not, I'm not going to jump on there. I've gone back once or twice, but I haven't seen that there's any significant change in it. Um, I mean, I didn't stay long enough to find pornography or anything like that, but I didn't see any real change and I'm not going to run the risk of setting off my, my covenant eyes screenshot, you know, moderate or monitors and stuff like that and have to explain some inappropriate uh, picture to my wife. So until I can be really sure that MeWe's made some some significant changes, I'm, I'm just not going back there. Um, Parlor, I still have it. I have my account. I check it every so often. But again, I, I haven't gotten deep enough into that. It still feels kind of clunky to me. I'm not a real big fan of the way Parlor is set up and so on. Gab, I like. Um, my, my big issue with Gab is again, when you, when you open up a, a platform for free speech, when you put that out there to where you can have all the free speech you want, you're going to get all the free speech you want. That's where governor Abbott comes in. Apparently he just, he he signed some anti-Semitism, anti-defamation. I don't know what the exact law was or order, whatever it was that he signed this last week um, with a couple of Jewish gentlemen. But the the comment was that they don't want anti-Semitic sites like Gab. They have no place in Texas. And so, um, one, I would not say that Gab is an anti-Semitic site. Gab is just a, it's, Gab is what we really want, what most people want Facebook and Twitter to be. It's just a platform. You go in, you create your account. Um, you can, you know, get behind the paywall, and you can get a pro account, and get a Gab TV, and like I did, um, you make your account. You follow the people you want to follow. 
And then you start posting stuff. But what happens when you get that is you get a lot of really bad stuff that gets posted. There, I mean, I have blocked more people on Gab than I have blocked on Facebook and Twitter. Because there's a lot of... when what, what happened with Gab is it said, here's an open forum to say whatever you want. And all the people who, whether for the right reasons or wrong reasons, who got banned from these other places came over and there is so much racist. There is a lot of anti-Semitic. Uh, I mean, I've just, I've come across uh, people and because I'm looking, I'm trying to find, I want to build a following there. I'm, I have a podcast. I have multiple podcasts. I've got the Gab TV channel. I want to create a presence. It's been very hard because I'm not posting stuff that just is stroking, um, you know, the Trump cult ego. I'm not posting stuff that is uh, racist in its nature. Um, I'm not posting stuff. And, and yes, I'm a white man and I don't have a problem with being white. I don't feel like I'm a racist or anything like that. But I'm also not going to, I'm not posting white power stuff. Because, I, I mean, I don't, it's not who I am. You know, I'm not posting uh, national uh you know, nationalist stuff or, or any of that, you know, but there it's so much is there and you have to weed through it. it. It literally has become an echo chamber. You know, Kira Davis is another podcast that I listened to and she made a comment. Someone had asked her about coming over to Gab and she's like, well, basically as long as I can exist on Twitter and these other ones, I'm not coming over there. I don't have time to do 18 different social medias, which I mean, Apparently they're out there and unless you've got someone that is specifically paid to do your social media, you really don't. And I don't have time. I, I don't have time to post on Facebook, Twitter and, you know, everywhere else. I, I kind of copy and paste and do a little bit of that. But for the most part, I've, I've kind of found one spot where I'm, I'm really comfortable. And that's probably going to be where the majority of my posting and stuff goes um, for my own personal uh, posting. But I still do Facebook. That's where I have the greatest amount, uh, the greatest sphere of influence is on Facebook. Um, and, and unless Facebook just completely cuts me off, I'm not, I have no, no intention of cutting ties with them. Until Twitter completely cuts me off, I have no intention of cutting ties with them. I am trying to shift uh, focus on my Twitter from my evangelical norm over to the master's dog. But, and I'm using that name more often than the the evangelical norm now just as a a branding change but you know as long as i'm able to stay there and and again the reason why kira davis hasn't come over is it's an echo chamber over at gab it really is it's just like it's it's all trump all the time all maga all the time um you know it the all the uh like the the post-millennial um uh, what, how do I want to describe the post-millennial reform crowd? It's actually the church that I belong to has all moved over there um, to, you know, continue to, the, I hate to say anti-woke, but that's kind of the feel that is there. Um, they've all moved over on the gab. And I'm, I'm, I'm like shocked at I, how, how quickly some of them have gained thousands of followers. And I come in with essentially a lot of the same stuff. And I, I'm, I'm, barely over 120. So again, it's kind of this weird thing. I do want to create and, and gain the following. It's just not happening rapidly. And, and part of it is I actually asked the question, I'm like, how do you get? And someone's like, well, you got to get Andrew Torba to, to retweet you or regab you or repost you or whatever the terminology is on gab. Um, or you have to say something that people really like. And I'm like, well, I could just say, you know, Trump's number one and see what that does. But I don't think Trump is number one. So I'm not going to lie. You know, apparently my uh, and the people bowed and prayed to the neon God. They made Trump meme didn't go over really well there. Um, and so I've not made a lot of friends on Gab. We'll just leave it at that. Um, Parlor, I'm not. Rumble is there. That's another alternative for YouTube that is out there. But I just haven't. I, I literally I've had things up on on P Rumble that have been there for three four months and have had one view. Yeah, you know, where I mean at least my stuff on on Facebook, I mean they get five six seven eight 
views every in in a couple of days before they fade off into obscurity. So Rumble is just the it's too time consuming. It takes it's taken like two days sometimes to get things approved and and posted after I've uploaded them. I just don't have time for that. Rumble's going to have to come to another to to get something better servers, better uh, admins, better something um, in order for that to be uh, my you know a place where I go and spend the time to to put my content out. So the reality is is as my content is on YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's on Twitter, it is on Gab, um, and and trying to 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 get better on Gab and and, and gain more of a following over there. Um, but it's going to remain on the big three. It's going to remain Facebook, YouTube, and, uh, and Twitter until for something happens and I have to move away from those three things. Again, do I agree with the way that YouTube runs its business? No. I mean, I don't like the fact checks. I don't like all that other stuff, but, um, but again, Mark Zuckerberg, runs his business the way he wants to. I can either abide by the terms of service and stuff like that, or I can leave. Uh, and that's, that's the reality of it. And, and again, we have to re- remember that, uh, that cancel culture, culture works both ways, right? It is, but we don't call it that on the right when we are trying to cancel these. I mean, literally people are trying to cancel YouTube and Twitter because YouTube and Twitter are canceling other people. So it's like, okay, well, you know, uh, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. You can't fight fire with fire or whatever. So those were the things, but the one place that I have found amazingly enough, and it's on, it's, 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 On the other side of a paywall, if you want to get into this social media, which is rapidly becoming my favorite social media, you have to pay. You have to become a subscriber to the Not The Bee website, and they have a social media uh, set up on on that site, uh, the app for Not The Bee. You can get all the articles that they do that is the weird news that you would think is the Babylon Bee, but is really not the bee. Um, And there's a really cool social media group there. Um, I mean, within a couple of days, I'm 20, 30 followers. I, like, I, I literally have been on there for three days. Um, I think my, I've got up to, um, let me tell you, let me see how many followers I have gained in my three days, my profile, where am I at? So the master's dog. And if you want to follow me, if you happen to be on the B. You can follow me. I've got 23 followers in three days. A um, lot of comments, a lot of posts, um, you know, a lot of interactions. I, I, this is probably the most active social media that I've been on in a long time. You know, I mean, I have 1,500 uh, Facebook friends and following and, and stuff like that. I post quite a bit, three to four times a day at least on Facebook. And I get more interaction with my posts with my for my 23 followers on uh, not the B than I do in you know than I do with 1,500 followers or 800 followers over on Twitter, and and I probably post at least daily on on all of these something on all these websites. Usually with Twitter and stuff, it's just a, a podcast that I that I drop and I put on or you know an, a, a retweet or something like that. But I. I do post quite often, but I'm coming to the conclusion that I really just want to post um, like my personal stuff in the places where it seems to be appreciated. Um, And that's right now, not the B. And so if you want to check it out, you should come and you should uh, get a subscription and support. I mean, support not the B and the Babylon B and discern and all those things. Um, God is, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot of subscribing lately. Uh, because again, it just seems like that's where, uh, things are easier to get, you know, if, if you don't want to be just in an echo chamber of the far right or just in the echo chamber of the far left, but you want to find some things that are somewhat centrist and, or center, right. Or, I mean, I, I lean very far to the right, but I just don't want to get 
I mean, all the way to the extreme of, of the stuff on the right. And I obviously don't want to get all the hate from the left. But so, I don't know. Social media has become this really weird thing that we think we should be able to, we should be able to control the way it works. But understanding, you know, it, these are all privately owned companies and le- until they make a, a public access you know, government run, which would be horrible, um, social media, then we have to, we have terms of services and things like that, that we adhere to with these other companies. And that's just the way it is. So if we're, you know, if we're going to hate cancel culture, we can't become cancel culture because of the cancel culture, right? Does that make sense? It, It really is. We just, I, I try to be just kind of a go with the flow kind of guy. Um, you know, I, I have boycotted places in the past simply because of, I mean, mainly because I don't like their product, but not because of who they endorse or what they do on their own time. Like, again, it's just, I don't know. I don't even know what this whole episode was supposed to be about, except to give you some insight on where I am right now with as far as social media and stuff like that. So if you really want to um, interact with me in social media, it's still going to be on Facebook is probably the most um, interacted. Uh, I'm very active right now trying to be on not the B trying to be uh, gain something on Gab. But these are things again, we, I want to see, I, I do, and I know nobody else on Gab does, but I would love to see some of the people from the left come over to Gab and, and to where there is some debate, to where there is, and there's nothing wrong with debate. And if you get stuck long enough in an echo chamber, then you really start to believe your own side's lies because there are lies on both sides. There really are. I mean, go look at some of the, the just, uh um, horrifying anti-Semitic and racist stuff that is over on Gab. It's there. You can find it. It's not hard. And, um, you know, check that out and look. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't be on Gab because of that. I'm not saying that Gab needs to kick those people off. I have a block feature and I use it. I use blocking on Facebook. I block on Twitter. I block on everything. Because I can control, I don't want them to have to kick people off. Let people say what they want to say. People, it's free speech, right? We can, we have the right to say the things we want to say. They don't have the, they don't have to let you say it on their platform. But I I, I think it would be an easier thing if they just allowed people to say what they said and then allow those of us, if you're offended by it, block it. Right. If it bothers you, block it. But we 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 shouldn't be completely shutting down debate simply because we don't dis- we don't agree with it. It doesn't help. It doesn't help at all. You know, and it, again, it, it's not even coming back to the gospel. When we talk about, you know, sharing the gospel, I preach to I work with people who are atheists, who are Mormon, who are, you know, Catholic, who all kinds of. Of, of things that I don't agree with. We've had conversations in every job that I've had. I've had conversations with people about what the gospel is. But again, I preach the gospel. I put it out there. I tell people you need to repent and trust Jesus or, or you're going to hell. And we have those, I mean, literally have those conversations. I don't sugarcoat anything. But once I've given them the truth, that's all I can do. That's all I have to do. I don't continue to harp on it. And I'm not cutting anybody off because they don't agree with me. I mean, if you're a, a just a jerk, I don't want to be around you. you know. But it's more your personality than your beliefs that's going to cause you and I to not be friends. You know, It's your attitude and not your necessarily your beliefs that are going to cause us to not be friends. But I'm going to give you the gospel and then I'm going to just leave it out there. Now it's it's in your court and it's ultimately God's job to draw you to a place of repentance or not. I mean, as a reformed person, I believe that's what God does. I preach the gospel. The Holy Spirit uses the words that I put out to draw people to himself or not. 
And that's the reality of it. And so we should we should have that same opinion. We should have that same attitude towards our social media, towards businesses, towards all kinds of other stuff. But I mean, the religious right is expert at cancel culture, even better than and have been doing it far longer than those on the left. And I think we're just part of it is we're mad that they're trying to take our thing. You know, we're the ones that do the boycotts. We're the ones that cancel people. We're the ones that say we don't want you unless you're going to do A, B, and C and what we want you to do. And then when the left said, well, we're going to start doing that too, we all got really mad. And when in the reality is, is the bottom line is this. We preach the gospel at all times and we use words that are necessary. And until next week, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm -hmm.